All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, today we're going to look at 3.13, that's the Earth's outer layers. Um, so CK12. Uh, this will be real basic, very elementary to, to get into this. Um, if you look at this, okay, so they're giving you, uh, talking about the gases, water, rock, living organisms are all found on Earth's surface. Uh, these materials are also found above or below the surface. They interact with each other and doing so alter each other. Uh, for example, the hydrosphere, uh, which is the water, may cause some of the lithosphere, which is the rock portion, to, to wash away. So here they go. Uh, so the earth is made up of ma many different layers, okay? Since the earth is round, the layers all have the ending sphere, okay? So you'll see the, the end, everything ends with sphere. So here are some of the different parts of the earth. Okay, so they're going to give you the, the four different uh, spheres. So obviously I would like you, you know, when I assign this to, uh, to highlight this and then complete the, the uh, exercise. All right, so the first sphere is going to be the atmosphere, which everybody's familiar with. It's the thin layer of air, and it's mostly composed of nitrogen and oxygen. In, in fact, it's, uh, mm, boy, oh, 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. So um, a lot of times people think there's more oxygen than any other gas within the atmosphere, but it's actually nitrogen at 78% and oxygen 21%. So that's your atmosphere. Um, just go with different colors. Uh, the hydrosphere, that is all the water on earth, easy enough. Hydro means water prefix. Uh, bio, bio is, means uh, living things. So the biosphere, ooh, wrong way. Uh, the biosphere are all the living things found on, on Earth. So bio means living or life. And then litho, litho means rock. So um, the lithosphere are all the solid parts of the Earth, mountains, valleys, continents, all the rock beneath the oceans. Okay, so those are four spheres, atmosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere, lithosphere. And they list it right here in this, this nice little uh, graphic. Okay, as you, you scroll down here, um, all these different layers, so these four layers, atmosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere, they all interact. And I want you to watch this little video, and it kind of goes through these, these, um, these uh, four different spheres and, and the processes and how they interact. So let me start this right now for you. Uh, put this in YouTube so it's larger. Uh, in the soil, in oh, ocean, yeah. today, in this tutorial, we're going to talk about the atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere, and biosphere. Let's talk about the atmosphere first. The atmosphere is basically all the gases surrounding the Earth. So when I talk about that, I mean, okay, here's a nice picture of the Earth from space. There's the surface of the Earth all the way to this point where you can't really see anything anymore. And that's the atmosphere, okay? Gases that we can't normally see. The atmosphere is where weather happens. Whenever we have storms or rain or anything, uh, the atmosphere is where this is occurring in. Um, wind currents are a big deal with the atmosphere because they transport things like clouds a long distance. Okay, if we didn't have that, then most of the Earth would be a desert. Um, since we're talking about a little bit of that, the atmosphere spreads that water through the water cycle. We remember that the water cycle is basically the sun's rays pounding the earth with, uh, with energy, making things hot. When water in its liquid form is heated up, whether it's uh, in the soil, in oceans, or in lakes, it will tend to rise. Uh, that is called evaporation. Once that, that water vapor rises up in the atmosphere high enough, it'll start to condense into clouds and as that uh, condensation increases increases pretty soon you have a nice uh, big cloud here and that water vapor will return to its liquid form in the form of precipitation which rain snow sleet or hail all right let's talk about the hydrosphere now it's all the water in the world all of it i mean rivers I mean lakes, I mean oceans, 
Now, the big deal with that is that we have ocean currents as well. Ocean currents will transport warm and cool water all around the globe. It's basically the heating and cooling system of the Earth. Um, let me get back down here. All right, now the water cycle is also not just how water is transported, but how the hydrosphere changes. Okay, in uh, oceans and lakes, it's liquid. As it evaporates, it is gas. As it condenses, it turns back into its liquid form. All right, now we have that all with. Let's talk about the lithosphere. Lithosphere, it's the Earth's crust. It's what we walk on. It's what our rocks are, are made of stuff. So we can see the lithosphere is this tiny little little skin that surrounds here, kind of like an apple. As a thin layer of skin, but all this kind of crazy, good-looking stuff inside here. All this is inside here. This would be liquid hot magma. Um, don't touch this. Uh, tectonic plates are a part of the lithosphere. They create mountains, valleys, volcanoes, even oceans. When those tectonic plates separate, they create oceans. Wow, isn't that cool? Okay, now another important thing about the lithosphere is that over time, uh, the rocks that are a part of the lithosphere can be turned into soil. Uh, we have weathering processes, such as rain falling down on this big rock, wind blowing this rock around, maybe freezing and, and thawing forces. All of those will separate little bits and pieces of this rock at a time. And we can see down here at the bottom of it, those little bits and pieces of rock are deposited at the bottom. This will be uh, eventually turned into soil. All right. Erosion over time turns rocks into soil. Now, the biosphere, since we're talking about biosphere, uh, soil, uh, let's transition right into plants and animals. Biosphere is all the plants and animals in the world. All these different plants, all these different animals, and of course, we see as a wonderful backdrop, backdrop, the soil, which we just talked about as the lithosphere. Okay, that's how these things are kind of connected. The soil in the lithosphere brings uh, forth uh, life in the form of plants, which also allow animals to exist. And then you have uh, their forces such as uh, the atmosphere and the hydrosphere, all interacting to bring life to this earth. Oh, how nice. Okay, that's the four spheres. All right, let's go back. Let me get rid of that. Okay, so that's not bad. Kind of goes through the four spheres, so pretty easy stuff. Um, so in summary, kind of what we've just seen, the earth's made of many layers. Um, the, the name ends in sphere, and the reason it ends in sphere is because the earth is round. Um, some of the layers, um, and here's the four, uh, the atmosphere, the biosphere, the hydrosphere, and the lithosphere. So this is the rock portion, this is the water portion, this is the living organisms, and this is the air portion. Um, and they go through lithosphere as the brittle crust. Okay, um, I'm going to play this video for you too, and then uh, and then I'll, we'll be done. Here we go. Expand this. Open this hey, up. What are you doing? I can't wait. Baby, I can't wait. This is Big Idea 3. Earth is a complex system of interacting rock, water, air, and life. The four major systems of Earth are the geosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere, and biosphere. Earth's geosphere is made up of its metallic core, solid rock, and also molten rock, soil, and sediments. The atmosphere is the mixture of gases surrounding Earth. The hydrosphere includes water in all its forms, ice, 
water vapor and liquid water in the atmosphere, the oceans, lakes, rivers and streams, water in soils, and groundwater. The biosphere comprises Earth's living things, which can be found in many parts of the geosphere, the hydrosphere, and the atmosphere. Humans are part of the biosphere. Human activities can have important impacts on all four spheres. All Earth processes are the result of energy flowing and mass cycling within and between Earth's systems. Earth's energy comes from the sun and from Earth's interior. It is the flow of energy and the cycling of matter that produces chemical and physical changes in Earth's materials and changes in living things. Carbon, in large amounts, constantly cycles within Earth's systems of rock, water, air, living things, and what we call the fossil fuels of coal, oil, and natural gas. Earth exchanges mass and energy with the rest of the solar system. Earth gains energy and loses energy through incoming radiation from the sun, heat loss into space, and from gravitational forces from the sun, moon, and planets. Earth gains mass from the impacts of meteorites and comets, while it loses mass through the escape of gases into space. Earth systems interact over a wide range of temporal and spatial scales. These scales can be microscopically small to global in size, and they can last from billions of a second to billions of years. It's the interactions between Earth systems that have shaped Earth history. They will also determine Earth's future. Regions where organisms actively interact with each other and their environment are called ecosystems. It is ecosystems that supply food, fuel, oxygen and nutrients needed to sustain life. Ecosystems also provide services such as climate regulation, the cycling and purification of water and the development and maintenance of soil all needed to maintain the biosphere. Ecosystems are considered to be the essential support units for life itself. Earth's systems are dynamic. They continually react to changing influences. Parts of Earth's systems seem stable. Some change over very long periods of time, while other parts can change very quickly and have a major impact on living things in the biosphere. Changes in part of one system can cause new changes to that system or to other systems, often in surprising and complex ways. Geoscientists describe some of these changes as feedbacks. This means that they can increase or decrease the original changes and be unpredictable and or irreversible. Geoscientists' knowledge and understanding of how feedbacks work within Earth systems is still developing. Earth's climate is an example of how complex interactions among systems can result in relatively sudden and significant changes. By looking at the geologic record, geoscientists can see that interactions among tectonic events, solar inputs, ocean circulation, volcanic activity, vegetation, precipitation, and human activities can all cause big and sometimes rapid changes to global and regional temperature patterns and precipitation. And that's big idea three. Earth is a complex system of interacting rock, water, air, and life. Good grammar. All right, uh, back to this. So um, that's it, actually. So uh, thank you for following along. 
I'll post this. Uh, if you need to reread it, go ahead and reread it. If you need to rewatch the videos, go ahead. Um, highlight it, complete the practice, turn in, and mark done. All right, thanks, guys.